<clears throat> Good morning, guys. Um, just got my camera in my car. I uh, just woke up, actually, so probably look like shit. Uh, voice is kind of dry. Wanted to <clears throat> just record myself and talk about, let you guys know my plans for 2026. Um, so I put a deposit down on a filament extrusion line, on a commercial extrusion line, a machine that can do about 20 kilograms per hour. It's so about uh, a spool every five minutes. Um, I just put the deposit down and I wanted to just talk about <clears throat> my thought process uh, and the plans and sort of uh, my my master plan with uh, with this with this uh, first extrusion line. Um, so I put the deposit down. It's going to take about 40 days to 45 days to get ready. Uh, hopefully the supplier is in China <clears throat> and the time frame now is looking like uh, hopefully they'll get it ready before Chinese New Year. And then the plan is for me to go to China, go to their factory, uh, and they're going to show me exactly what I need to do to operate it, uh, maintenance-wise, uh, all the parts that come with the extrusion line. Uh, and basically, they're just going to show me the machine that they have for me, the, the exact one that I'm buying. They're going to make sure that it works, it operates. So I'll spend a couple of days there at the factory, probably two to three days, I would assume. I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it's going to take that long. Um, but while I'm there, I'm also going to be looking at other other lines that they offer. Um, so they have like twin screw extruders. They have machines that can do gradient, rainbow filament, gradient and rainbow filament. Um, they have tri, tri screw extruders. So I'm going to probably be looking at a little bit of all of that. Um, so right before Chinese New Year, uh, they'll ship it out. Uh, that'll and then it's going to take another probably 45 days on the water it's going to be shipped by sea um, the total cost that i paid without shipping was forty one thousand dollars now um, this machine comes with a lot of uh i don't know if it's newer technology but they have um, a 50 kilo uh vacuum uh sorry 50 kilo uh dryer and then they have an automatic feeder that goes from the dryer to the hopper uh, I have a I bought a, a volumetric doser uh, the doser is just something that mixes the colorant in automatically um, obviously when I get everything uh, I'll, I'll show you guys what that is uh, so you don't have to hand mix you know whatever ratio colorant that you're trying to make for that day uh, it comes with a vacuum sealer it comes with um, a bunch of other a bunch of other equipment um, and the <clears throat> And the, and the, and the, I guess the factory that I use or the, the manufacturer that I use, this is somebody that I've had a relationship, that I've had a relationship for, for about four, uh, a year and a half now. Uh, I buy their plastic. So if you, if you know Isomate, um, this is the parent company of Isomate that they make, uh, 3D print film extrusion lines. The company is called Sung Hue. Um, and so I already have like, you know, I've, I already bought thousands of rolls of plastic from these guys and they saw that I, I was making a plastic in house. And they, uh, they they told me that they, they make plastic, uh, you know extrusion lines. They also supply a, a few companies here in the U.S. that I know about. So they are reputable, and they are a real company. Um, whew. So yeah. So the plan is, my plan right now is obviously the space that I have at the warehouse is rather shit. Um, we're going to start sending out all of the costume stuff that I have in the boxes and stuff straight out to Amazon, to AWD. I'm going to have it stored at AWD. And so for the, for the next two or three months, that's really all we're going to be doing is just emptying out the warehouse. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to empty out the back room yet, but the entire front area is going to be emptied out. And uh, whatever products we can send out to AWD is what we're going to do just to clear out as much space as possible. Um, I also did order 17,000 empty spools. Now, the reason that it's 17,000 is because that's how much if, that's how much will fit in a full 20-foot container on the sea, so it's much cheaper for me to buy that much quantity. I'm actually in talks right now to see if I can maybe get less, maybe half of that cuz I can't fit. I don't think I can fit 200 it's it comes in 290 master cartons. And they're pretty, pretty damn big. I don't know if I can fit 
that many empty spools into the space that I have now, along with pallets of resin, along with the extrusion line, along with the setup for uh, a spot for people to come in and buy the, buy the filament. I'll get into that in a second. Um, but yeah, so all, all, all in right now, the initial uh, CapEx cost for this extrusion line is $60,000. That is the screw, uh, the extrusion line setup, and then 17,000 empty spools of Seventeen thousand empty spools that I'll be able to spool on and, and be able to sell, and then also I have to buy uh, packaging uh, boxes and stuff. So step one in this plan is obviously to get the single screw extruder. This will allow me to do single color PLA. Uh, we're going to start with PLA because the PLA is probably eighty percent of the market of what people use, um, and twenty percent of what I produce is probably going to be used in house at first. Well, it's going to be used in-house for sure at my print farm. We probably go through about maybe a current rate, maybe six, seven hundred spools of solid PLA every month. <clears throat> so a portion of what we make will be used directly to the print farm. So that's already direct savings uh, in the uh, in in real in real life, you know, money. Instead of me buying plastic, I can just use the plastic that I make. All right, let me take a step back first. Um, step one is really a proof of concept stage for me and uh, whether or not um, we move on to step two, step three, step four, all depends on step one. So I'm going to be spending probably the first three to four, three to five months learning how to use and operate this machine uh, efficiently and, um, you know, being able to run the machine for 10 hours, shutter process, shutdown process, issues that, that happen in that time frame um, I'm probably gonna have one of my employees shadow me for the first three months and the idea is that eventually that's uh, that'll be something that he will be responsible for um, you know coming in starting the line and then ending the line at the end of the day um, and my plan is to have the line operate for about 10 hours per day and, you know maybe he'll do the first seven to eight hours and then at the end of the day I'll come in and finish off the last hour or two and shut down the machine and then when I'm there I'll probably maybe go live for TikTok uh, at night time um, so the first stage is really the proof of concept right uh, we're going to be focusing solely on PLA uh, solid color PLA uh, you know the red black blue gray silver all that all, all the very generic stuff and we're going to be building up uh, we're going to be building out a brand we're going to be allowing people to buy this on uh e-commerce platforms so I'm gonna be leveraging my knowledge on Amazon Walmart eBay uh, TikTok, um, and also so that, that I think I think the e-commerce side is probably gonna account for 60% of the sales 20% will come from my print farm and then the other 20 um, I'm debating if I'm gonna open this up to retail into uh, meaning uh, people who are local to the Northeast if they want to come and buy the filament they can just walk in and, and maybe place an order online they can walk in and pick it up and we'll have it ready for them at the, at the front or something and they can just pay uh, by cash or credit card um, something like that um, but but really the the first three months it's all about making high quality uh, consistent filament um, you know it, it's, it's actually really weird um, I've been using a uh, a few brands consistently um, and what I've noticed is uh, the even when I change from spools like if I do black and black the same color same manufacturer same same batch the colors don't match um, I'm not gonna name any brands here but it's happened to about two to three brands that I consistently use um, if you guys have experienced that let me know but it's, it's really weird that that's that, that that's happening it's the same exact spool the same batch the same batch number and um i know that these uh other companies are using a cheaper polymer i can't prove it but i know it um and so i, I know they're they're adding stuff into their into their product um that that makes it a little bit cheaper uh quicker to make things like that um and so we're going to use a very uh high quality polymer we're gonna we're not gonna cheap out on the on the product itself um, but it's really just about making 
good, high quality, consistent filament that we have in stock. I think the, the, the thing that most people look for when they're purchasing plastic is obviously number one, price, uh, price, consistency, and availability. I think those are the three things that people really look for in filament. Um, that's what I look for anyway. Like it, it really sucks when you have a good color of a product of a, of a filament that you use and then you go to buy it and they're sold out. That is like, for me, that's like the worst thing. Um, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, so that, that, that step one is really just to uh, hammer down the single slot, single line extruder, uh, making a proof of concept, seeing if people are gonna buy this stuff for me in the, in the, in the first place, uh, get feedback internally uh, on, on usage in the print farm and then externally, um, through people on my social media page, uh, people who buy from my other platforms and getting real in-person feedback. And then we can tweak things as we need to down the line. So that is that is stage one. Okay, so that is basically stage one, proof of concept, making sure that we can make quality, consistent filament, um, and we get a good feedback loop from um, internal usage at the print farm and also uh, some, uh, from customers that we sell to online. And really stage one is not really about profitability. Um, in fact, I'm going into this knowing that I'm gonna be losing money for the first six months of this operation uh, just to gain customer feedback, uh, gain a positive uh, loop with customers, and also just um, obviously we're either gonna be operating at a small loss or break even. Um, I don't expect to make a ton of money. <clears throat> um, if I do, then then we will move on to step two. So if all the all the things I just said before um, work out, we're gonna move to stage two. So stage two is getting a second line, uh, a second single screw shooter that is mirrored uh, with the first line. So it'll be basically one line this way and then another line this way, and then an operator will be in the middle uh, that operates both lines. Um, <clears throat> and that will allow me to scale the current line the current operation, it'll allow me to scale to where I can become profitable. Um, it'll reduce my labor cost by half. I can order resin in the truckload, which will reduce my raw cost by 30% or something like that. Um, I can order <coughs> uh, more spools, uh, boxes in bulk, which will further reduce uh, costs. So that is, that is the plan for stage two. So basically stage two is just uh, further expanding the, the PLA offerings. And like I said, we're just gonna focus on PLA for the first wow, six to nine months maybe of, of doing this. Um, and, then, and then the decision is whether or not I will go into other polymers. Um, so anyways, that's stage two. Stage two is pretty, pretty simple. Um, it's just more about growing and scaling and then focusing a little bit more on profitability which I don't think will be um, super difficult as long as stage one actually works out. Now stage three, <clears throat> stage three is a, is a very interesting part. Um, I'm already set on machines that can make uh, gradient colors, that can make rainbow colors. So I already have the pricing for those. I know the cost. Um, and so there's machines that can do like these rainbow rolls uh, machines that can do and, and it just requires different like a uh, setup of the extruder um, there's like this hopper system that will automatically feed different colors at different times it's actually really cool so stage three is when I expand into a rainbow line and also a twin screw extruder to do uh, dual color filament like this blue yellow blue yellow um, and those both will require also gradient, um, gradient, Mac gradient stuff. Um, that's also cool. And so that is going <clears throat> to be my plan. Uh, stage three, stage one and two are going well. We're generating positive cash flow. We're able to sustain that over the course of a month, two months, three months. Sustain, sustain that. We're gonna look into getting a bigger warehouse and then we're also going to look into expanding into the rainbow and dual color 
PLA offerings. Um, so stage three, either we start there or stage three consists of moving into PLA, uh, sorry, not PLA, PEG slash ABS. <clears throat> I don't know, since I don't print with ABS or PEG, I don't know how big of the addressable market buys PEG and ABS. Maybe you guys who are viewing uh, can inform me. I, I can't imagine ABS is a huge market share of the total amount of plastic that's being purchased in the market, maybe 5%. I think um, PEG maybe ten percent. I would think like I would think like PLA is like eighty percent of the market. Um, that's just based on my own personal uh, my own personal bias. I don't actually have any data behind that, but <clears throat> maybe there's somebody in the industry that already knows some some of those numbers. But yeah, that stage three would be to get into a bigger space, buy two more lines, uh, rainbow and gradient. Sorry, rainbow and dual color. Um, hire another person to manage those and then then at that point we'll probably transition more into a filament that that business will be more of a filament business um, the new space will allow me to expand that business while also expanding the print farm business so I can I can use both you know the money from both to expand both at the same time sort of it's interesting and then stage four is where we you know I think we get Stage four, I haven't even thought about yet. But stage four is like uh, hiring an in-house R&D person to do uh, specialty colors. Um, maybe we start selling globally to like Amazon uh, in the EU, uh, Canada, Mexico, things like that. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that, that I just wanted to get this on video. Those are my initial thoughts on the filament extrusion line, what my plans are in the short term. So basically all the stuff behind me these are, this is all going to be sent out. Let me show you. This entire space here, down. Uh, the printers are going to be moved back to the print farm. All this stuff here in the next two, three months is going to be cleaned up. Either sent out to AWD. Uh, we have a lot of eggs that we're going to be sending out uh, and prepping for Amazon for Easter. All this stuff here is going to be moved out. And then... My extrusion lines are going to start basically from this wall, 50 feet down, straight down that way. And then uh, the entire front area over there will be for, you know, storage of the filament. Um, that's where we're going to do our prep area, uh, our FBA prep if we're doing Amazon. Um, we'll also be opening the space up probably to retail. So my initial plan is to just collapse everything, uh, send out all these boxes, collapse all of these shelves basically making this entire space empty. Uh, get the lines in, set up the lines, and then we'll, we'll build the shelves around the lines um, as, as we need uh, in terms of uh, storage and spacing and all that stuff. So that is the initial plan. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, now I know that this is, this is basically another business that's being started. It's not really a complement to uh, the 3D print farm, the 3D print business where we have you know, we sell products online and stuff. It's a, it's a totally different business. And I understand that, or maybe I don't understand it. I know I, I know I say I understand it, but maybe it's probably gonna be a lot more than, um, than I think it's going to be. But I think that I can do it. We'll see. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you have any uh, questions or comments, let me know. See you guys in the next video, bye.